What's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack, and this is Last Call. That's right. We are talking 10 books that are heading final order cutoff this coming Monday night, March 23rd. So make sure you get those orders in before then. But we have some great picks tonight. We're going to start it off right now with Faithless 2, number one from Boom Studios. This is one of those series that came out, caught some people off guard, especially with that erotica variant. They're coming back with those again, but they even have a better cover, an FOC variant by Chris Anka that a lot of people are talking about. Yeah, and I mean, this is no surprise. Um, this is a series that, you, as you mentioned, took people by storm, um, kind of ushered in a new wave of kind of, um, I'll say, an acceptability in sexually driven comics that we've seen over the last years, where um, as long as tastefully done, as long as appropriately done, as long as told through the proper perspective, it seems as though these stories that with a highly sexual tone have found an audience, whether or not it's a book like this, where it's kind of um, erotic fantasy versus a book like say um, money shot where it's more erotic humor. Um, either way, these, these books have found a, a collector base and a readership. And I expect this second volume of Faithless not to catch anyone off guard. I think people put together those, uh, those, uh, the risque variants, uh, that was a popular set to collect. And we always talk about the benefits of set collecting and I expect people to get on board, um, with whatever booms variant program is going forward uh with this book because this was a this was a big hit um this was a big hit with with women this was a big hit with men this was a big hit across the board so i expect it, it kind of kicked off boom's great 2019 so i think this is the book that'll kick off boom's 2020 yeah i enjoyed this series and you kind of touched on it but it was great yeah. also because all those erotica covers were done by female artists. I think that had a good thing going for them. Could have been, I won't say a PR nightmare, but it could have gone the other way had you had some males yeah. artists doing some of those covers. That's just the nature of the business. But either way, great series, hit and find our cutoff. I also want to take this moment for those joining us in the chat. Thank you so much for watching this, joining us during that premiere, getting the conversation going in the chat. You guys make this video what it is and people listening to the audio version on our podcast. Thank you so much as well. Definitely appreciate it. And lastly, for those who aren't watching it during the premiere, but are watching it prior to Monday night for that final order cutoff, you guys, all of you, make up Simple Men's Comics family, and we are greatly appreciative. And here we have Batman number 93. Seems like Batman's going to be in a lot of videos and a lot of conversations. And for good reason, we always talk about James Tenney and run. Plus, you have a couple new first appearances that recently showed up in Punchline and the designer. And the designer kind of thinks being overlooked. But center stage here, Batman 93. Plus, there's a 1 in 25 incentive variant of the designer for this, right, Jack? That's right. There's a Jimenez, uh, similar, a design variant, very similar to what we saw with Punchline being solicited for Batman 92. We know what that book has done. It's gone nuts. Um, I expect this designer variant to do very well, although it will not hit the prices of Punchline because there's a, a vast difference in the um, demand and popularity of those two characters. But as you and I have talked about, Brian, maybe there shouldn't be. Um, designer was the first character we saw um upon Tinian's run was the first character uh we were all excited for due to the look uh yes we all had that kind of uh bloom fever where we were uh, a little bit afraid of uh past excitement over batman villains um but nonetheless both of these characters have commanded the hobby's attention dc was paying attention i think to what happened after punchline where the next two issues still doing incredible sales numbers um and i think that that drove them to believe that designer is marketable right now as well hence how we got this one in 25 variant because if you know dc comics you know usually only event issues you're getting incentives think um like you know dark knight frank miller type stuff or you know some sort of um crossover miniseries outside of that you really don't get ratio variants from dc comics and it tends to put value on the ones that you do get so um this is one to keep an eye out for uh now the thing is with the cover price of these dc comics books it's only going to cost a store about fifty dollars for books and the variant i expect to see these variants sold for probably about 25 to 30 but that's something to keep an eye out for yes and i personally i like the cardstock variant the best the matina harley quinn 
I'm going after that one. Yeah, and it's a dollar more at cardstock, so I'll, I'll go four ninety nine on that one. Speaking of Joker, we have Nightwing number 71. Now we saw a number issue 70 kind of start to kick off that Joker war, get more into it with issue number 71. It's kind of a regular cover as well as that cover B. But you talked about this during the Bolo show this past week. I'm picking this up purely for that continuity of the story and really looking forward to what's going to go on when Joker Wars hits. Oh, yeah, I'm very excited to read this one, Brian. Maybe more excited than any other book on the list this week because the reality is, to me, this seems like an homage to the killing joke. We're getting a tied-up Dick Grayson, captured and, and captive, um, and he has to listen to the mad ramblings of the Joker. Uh, and if that doesn't remind you of the killing joke and kind of the Joker trying to expound his belief system on Batman, it seems like that's what we're going to get with Dick Grayson. And there is this little line in the solicit that has me interested where it says, they actually refer to, to him, Rick. I still can't get used to that. He'll always be Dick Grayson to me. But, uh, you know, Rick, he doesn't know what Joker – what their history is and there's still so much mystery surrounding this whole three joker thing and and um you know which one are you dealing with and who who do you have history with and what is your history and who you know there could be history with these characters we don't even know so i'm very excited to see if we're going to get little nuggets of information um that will kind of lead us towards that eventual crescendo when we get jeff john's story that and we all know that Nightwing 72 is supposed to be another issue where Punchline shows up, but we've also seen publishers do that, and then next thing you know, they're showing up an issue earlier. So for everyone that's into those Punchline fans, I'm not saying she is in it, but you never know. Pick it up for the story at least. I'm excited for it. Yeah, Joker crossover stories consistently do well. Um, you know, the uh, Death of the Family story from the New 52, people still pick that storyline up. Then Bitterroot number eight. Now, we've talked about this for the past couple issues, mostly because of those one in ten incentive movie homage variants. This one's going to have that Purple Rain variant, but I also believe this is the first time that they're actually open order variants, aren't they, Jack? That's correct. Now, this series is amazing. If you're a reader um, of this series, you already know. If you haven't been reading, I really cannot recommend this book enough. Pick up the trade, get caught up. Um, Really, really an amazing groundbreaking series. But you're right. This is all about the variant cover. So we've seen what's happened on the market, 70 to to $100 on these Bitterroot um, incentive variants. Now, we let you guys know that from the get-go that these were going to be popular. Um, the creators of Bitterroot, good friends of the channel. Um, and ooh, there was no doubt that this was going to was going to be successful now we you right we are transitioning to open order variants so this will affect the pricing don't expect those 70 dollars prices still gorgeous but, cover and like you said still great story still great story still gorgeous cover but i still think there's investment um potential here if you look at it, it you know the book was a one in ten ratio say it's selling for 70 it's selling for seven times ratio if a open order book was selling for seven times. You'd be looking at $28. I would expect about half of that because dealers will order enough. Um, so using that logic, expect $14, $15. The week of, of release, I think, is certainly a, a possibility. Because as much as it seems like this would be a no-brainer order, open order, look at the success of the last two, um, you'll be surprised. Dealers still need to really go delve into previews and go hard on a cover B maybe of a series they're not stocking up for their shelves so this is one to keep an eye out for it's, it's always interesting when these sort of subtle, subtle changes are made such as going from an incentive to an open order variant but this is the one with the cover with the most potential being that it's a purple rain cover the two purple rain covers that come to mind um were that bad girl homage uh that i believe uh, was it was done during like the movie poster variants yeah. during and the, the snake eyes man and then the snake eyes and you know you look at both of those the Batgirl was an open order variant, um, and I don't know what that's trading for, but it was like forty to seventy to five dollars at some point. Um, the Snake Eyes, when you're talking about multiple hundreds of dollars, yeah. around five hundred dollars, um, and it's a supply and demand thing, but it's also that crossover popularity. Man, you cannot underestimate people's love for Prince. You cannot underestimate people's love for the movie Purple Rain. Yeah, or the, just the pop culture. I mean, you see, you know what it is. Yeah, and you mentioned 
about the open order and the stuff like that. I wanted to mention something goes for pretty much any book that we're talking about. Purpose of the show is also get those pre-orders in. There's nothing more important than right now because of the uncertainty that's going on. You don't know how many of these comic book stores are going to order because I don't know what comic stores are doing right now, whether they're open, whether they're letting people in, whether they're just doing mail orders, whether they're doing curbside pickup. We're in a different time period, so it's harder to predict. So it's more important if you want these books and you're liking them on the show, definitely get those pre-orders in for them. Yeah, I need to double tap what Brian just said. We're going to talk about this in a lot more detail on an upcoming podcast, but he's absolutely right. Starting with this FOC order, we really don't know what to expect. Dealers have just began curbside pickup. Stores are closed now to the, to the public. This FOC order very well may be different for a lot of shop owners. I think a lot of shop owners, Brian, are going to cut this order back. And I think that's going to result in some shortages. There'll be some hot books. So absolutely, make sure you pre-order what you want. And if you can prepay your store, if you, if you want to pick up five copies of this Bitterroot number eight cover B variant, buy them from your store, prepay, let them, let them use that cash. That is essential. That cash flow is essential to comic shops right now. And again, for your benefit, you're going to get that largest discount. You're talking about a $4 cover price book. I've seen solicitations as low as like three twenty-five, dollars um, And that 75 cents may not seem like a lot, but boy, you add that up. That is, that is return on investment built in right there. We just talked about issue number 306 this week on the Bolo Show, but we have spawn number 307 hitting final cutoff as well. This has four different covers for it. You got that Philip Tan. You got that Todd McFarlane. You also have the Matina goodness. But Spawn is, I'm not really going to say it was down, but, you know, it kind of treads water, but we seem to have picked up in popularity again, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, with the whole it, uh, approach of issue 300, when you look at when certain issues have hit landmark issues, thing Ninja Turtles, um, you know, in, in, in recent times, how you are after that issue tends to vary, but most of the time we tend to see kind of a drop down in demand, not with Spawn. It's like all the eyes that got on Spawn for 300 now have stayed there and consistently every issue since 300 for various reasons, whether it's a first appearance or a return of a character, people are getting hyped for it. But it's funny for me as an OG Spawn fan, because I'm sitting there like, well, that stuff happens all the time. But fans now, like whether it's, key collector culture uh, or whether it's, you know, just that need to have that next first appearance, whether it's people seeing the back issue market in spawn, right? Look at those back issues booming. Some people are trying to be smart and go ahead and grab issues now that they can sock away. And uh, you know, those rando bando spawn issues, once they dry up on the market, start hitting astronomical prices. Um, I, and, and I think there's a lot of more spawn readers now, Brian, it seems like more and more people are reading this series. It seems like McFarlane's almost up his game a bit with it. It's like, he, it's, he's focused in, he's dialed in right now and he's really giving the fans what they want. Um, if there's a character that's cool, he's using them. If there's a concept that's cool, he's using it. Um, and, the, and he's really been on point with these covers, whether it's Ben Matina, whether it's his own stuff, whether it's Philip Tan, there's really been some incredible covers. And I don't expect that to stop anytime soon. I think Todd is a smart guy, uh, a real pillar of this industry. And I think he's going to capitalize on this popularity and ride this one. Yeah, I was just about to say that one of the things is Todd's work stands on its own. But Todd's one of those guys, he just grinds. He's yeah. always out there. He's good at marketing what he does. He's good at marketing his toys. He's good at marketing anything he's working on. People know about it, whether it's from his Facebook group or word of mouth. But either way, Spawn, I mean – like I said, that stands on its own, but Todd makes sure people are aware of it. That's right. I mean, they call him the Todd father. The Todd father, that's, that's who he is, absolutely. And then moving from Image back over to Marvel, we get Children of the Atom number one, Jack. Yeah, and here, you're not thinking, think Generation X, but that next iteration, Generation Z of the X family. We're looking at the sidekicks of X-Men, um, these future stars uh, of, of, of the X world, and they're kind of being put together. Think about it like almost a Teen Titans. That's what Children's of the Atom is. It's, it's the young sidekick superheroes that 
Um, the X-Men are developing. I think there, there's an opportunity for first appearances or at the very least character development, some underutilized characters being used uh, in a setting where they're, they're going to be able to shine. So this to me is very reminiscent of why I like like Outlawed and some of those series that, that kind of go with it because we're giving attention to some of these younger future generation characters, which I think is the only way to progress these stories um, ultimately. And especially eh, I think the X-Men is a real prime example of that. So uh, this one I could see not necessarily being the most popular, but I think it could be a fun read. This one's going to take some reader buzz. This is going to take the name alone. Isn't going to bring people out to order it. Um, but it's one that I could see being popular. And I know you guys, you X book readers out there, I know you guys are on board because you guys are reading everything, all 150 X books that are coming out right now. People jumping all over them. Sticking with Marvel, we get Empire number one. This is that new what, Avengers Fantastic Four crossover. There's going to be a bunch of covers for this, but also something of note, they are already soliciting a unhealthy second print for this with the first print. Yeah, I hate that. Um, we, we hear so many people talk so much shit about whether it's Boom Studios or Image and how they go about doing their later printings. Um, and we've said this before. We've said... Boom, image, companies like that, they don't have the money to just do willy-nilly printings. All of their late printings are done based on analytical data, based on what they're seeing from Diamond as far as the amount. Not to of mention all their number one, they're, they're returnable. Right. So they're, they're, all their data about how, ma how many books the marketplace needs, it's based upon the expected shortage in the reader market. This in Yuck League covers gorgeous. But please somebody tell me why we have to print up a second print the same day as the first print. The reality of the situation is if they're on FOC at the same time, there's no need for the second print. Why can't that in Yuck Lee cover be just a cover B? Why does it have to be a second print? I just don't understand that. It, this that's, is a different cover. It goes to the one that artificial scarcity thing that we talk about, Brian. It's it's really just an artificial um product to me because it's is it really a second printing if it's coming out the same day as the first printing is that really truly what a second printing is um i would argue no i would argue it's a variant cover second printings tend to come at later dates but either way empires is a storyline a lot of people are excited for as you mentioned you got fantastic four um you've got you've got hulkling you've got kree you've got uh you know you've got um What's it? The uh, the green guys. Who am I thinking of? Scrolls. Yeah, you've got Cree. <laughs> <laughs> you've got Cree. You've got Scrolls. Uh, Hulkling has been ever since incoming. Ever since the image for incoming was leaked, um, Hulkling has had a lot of attention. I personally, though, think that this story is a bit of a miss for Marvel. I think that they had hoped for some demand going into this this issue and i don't think it's there um i don't know whether it was a timing thing or whether it was just the the whole hulkling thing didn't take off the way that they had hoped but it'll be interesting to see if this this series picks up some reader buzz i mean i'm gonna read it but it's not necessarily it doesn't give me the same feeling that like outlaw did or something like that um so hopefully i'm wrong yeah another thing about this a lot of times if you tell me david finch is doing a variant for it i'm pretty hyped up not hyped so hyped up about the David Finch cover on this one. I am I'm sticking with cover A. I'm gonna read it. Um so Empire, yeah, they, they did a good job putting floors in my house upstairs. So call Empire today. <laughs> Got them dad jokes. <laughs> So here we are. It's a Marvel heavy week for Last Call, but sometimes it is what it is. And we have New Warriors number one come out and play. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We've got the New Warriors with the classic New Warriors. I'm talking Speedball and Night Thrasher. 
but they are joined by some new folks. They are dubbing this book the new New Warriors. So this is part of the Outlawed crossover series. This is going to play into that Outlawed story that you may have seen us talk about on the Bolo Show with the long-term play of the week. Um, again, this Outlawed story is going to be one they're going along with. I think this one has a chance. I think it's going to get overshadowed a bit by Empire. Um, I think these books are going to be low print, and it's why we're talking to you about these. But the caveat you get with this is multiple first appearances. We're talking about the first appearance of screen time, the first appearance of Snowflake, the first appearance of Safe Space, the first appearance of Be Negative, uh, and the first appearance of Trailblazer. Some very cool-looking characters, albeit controversial. Certainly, when you come with names like Snowflake and Sna Safe Space, you're going to get attention. Um, but either way, that attention can be very positive. Be Negative's got a cool almost vampire vibe. Um, you've got trailblazer kind of a heavier set african-american woman looks like she's almost got like a uh black panther book bag i think that these characters look fun hip young new exciting the question will be the longevity we've seen a lot of these types of characters created over the last couple of years by both marvel and dc and we haven't been able to see this kind of like uh these plays on pc culture really turn into anything more than kind of a tongue-in-cheek joke so We'll see whether or not these characters can really be developed. I think the New Warriors is a good place for them. It's a good place for, like, new young characters um, because it's not like the original team members of New Warriors are all that synonymous with with the team, and it's not like it's not like comic fans are really used to that lineup. So that's a lineup you can kind of play with and develop the way you want to. So this is very similar to that Children of the Atom book that we talked about. That book was dubbed the New New Mutants. This one is New New Warriors. Um, and we can really see that Marvel is trying to get back to some of the team success that they've had in the past um, with a different spin on it. Yeah, I mean, to me, I don't consider myself the key demographic, so I don't really have much interest in reading this. But I fully respect that there is a demographic that this book is targeting and they're probably interested in reading this. This is a five issue miniseries. There are going to be collectors that are picking it up. Like you mentioned, there's first appearances in it, but either way for me, myself, I'm probably going to pass on this one. Not because I'm hating the book, just because I have no interest in it. I saw that solicit in the very, I said this on the Bolo show. I said the very first thing I thought to myself was Brian's going to hate this one. <laughs> <laughs> Here we have Spider-Woman number two. Now we just talked about Spider-Woman num this week. <laughs> now we just talked about Spider-Woman number one this week. Spider-Woman number two is hitting FOC this coming Monday night. There's some great covers. I personally think that one in 50 and Sin of Jenny Frizzer variant is hot fire. That's why I like it. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to put it in this video. But Jack, what do you think of Spider-Woman number two? Well, I, I, I think you really gave the main selling point for this issue. Um, looking at Spider-Woman number one, we talked about this on the channel. There was a multitude of exclusive variants created. And again, can't blame any store that did it. Three 125 variants. I mean, you start looking at the, the variant. Our program. channel sponsor had that Adam Hughes one that was gorgeous. Right. You start looking at the, the, uh, the ratio variants that were attached to number one. It was sort of a no-brainer. I think that book would have sold itself um, when you start looking at the, the return on investment based on what those incentives alone were bringing. Forget about the exclusive that you create. Um, going into issue number two, I think you'll see far less retailers do books, if any. Um, you're not going to see mail calls or things like that do books. So you're going to see far less of a production. We're used to seeing about a 50% print run drop from issue number one to issue two. That's pretty standard, industry standard. So if we see a, a drop in line with expectation, I would expect actually larger than a 50% drop because you had some special circumstances with issue number one being that there were so many exclusives that probably tied up an extra, say, 30,000 copies that probably wouldn't have been ordered. But you have a one in 50. It's a high ratio variant. Now, when you go back and you look in Marvel variants, a lot of these kind of lesser characters, and I have to put Spider-Woman into that category. And look, people are going to get mad, but I would also say like a Moon Knight and a Morbius and characters like that. Um, these series have never been truly, truly popular. They kind of, they, they come and they go. But they're in they have their they have their dedicated fan base, but yeah, it doesn't right. cross main. I won't say mainstream, but mainstream comic hobby collectors like like we know. Right, but one thing is is true with all of them. Electra is another example. If you go back and look at the incentive variants for issues two, three, and four, they are stronger than issue one. 
Why is that? Well, because again, it's just le less available. How many stores are going to order up 50 copies of Spider Woman number two? Uh, I don't think I don't think nearly as many. And I think that Frizen is a as marketable an artist right now as you can get on the market. The covers gorgeous, and it kind of crosses over. We were talking, and it kind of crosses that John Tyler Christopher negative space type variant. That those are yeah. super hot right now. Yeah, I think that red background was really clutch with that book because it gives it that negative space background without really kind of biting JTC style. Um, I, we talked before we started recording. It's very reminiscent of her X Men red covers, um, but very very cool cover. Very very. Um, desirable i think in demand cover and one that i could easily see going well above ratio on least day but that's another benefit of the last call show this gives you the opportunity to get in contact with your lcs and see because you'll be surprised a lot of times we talk to people and their lcs they want like that one in 50 ratio they call their lcs and their lcs is like oh i was only going to order you know 30 or I was only going to order this many or that many. And, you know, maybe you can make that order difference up for that store and get that ratio. There's a lot of stores out there that'll work with you on things like that. So, you know, make those calls. See right now we need to be supporting those shops. So, uh, you know, if this is a book that you're into, make sure before FOC, you go check that out because I really think after FOC, you're going to be chasing that frizzing variant. Yeah. And just in case you aren't aware, FOC, stands for final order cutoff just there's some people out there that every now and then yeah. like hey what are you talking about so that's what it's we'll true it's true we out. bring in we bring in new viewers new listeners i know the podcast stuff has really taken off lately um it's important to mention those things i think sometimes we take that for granted so final order cutoff that is the last day that you can order new comic books from diamond to be guaranteed uh that your retail shop is going to get the books that they ordered after that you can only order from the leftover stock that diamond has and that depletes fast especially with hot books so that's why we have this show to make sure that we are keeping you informed make sure that we're keeping the comic shops uh, informed, make sure that we're, we're pushing sales towards those comic shops right before that FOC date. And here we have Resistance number two. This is another book where the first issue just came out. It's from that AWA, or as we call it, Upshot, Artists, Writers, and Artisans publisher, to be fully transparent, but resistance number two, final order cutoff. Issue number one has got a lot of great reader buzz. Like you mentioned in the Bolo show this week, it's kind of ties into to current day. So a lot of people are interested, not to mention it's got one hell of a creative team behind it. But issue number two is hitting final order cutoff, Jack. That's right. And again, we're talking about this because this is a new publisher who I don't think like set the world on fire with issue number one. Shops have to go make cuts. They've got to make selections. This is a book that I think is going to end up being similarly like a pull list only type book at most shops. So if this is at all a series you want to get involved with, now's the time. I'm pretty sure you can go get your hands on issue number one. Uh, I would jump on board with this if you're at all interested in reading this. And it's really going to be essential right now that communication between customer and LCS. Um, it's also important to note, Brad, when we were in Baltimore, that upshot now number zero that, uh, um, preview book that had an entire preview issue of resistance. Number one is now selling for upwards of $20 on eBay. Um, it's as, as this series gets popular, that book is going to get increasingly popular. Be on the lookout for that because I've seen people list that low around $7 shipped at times. Um, grab yeah, they're that. They're just excited to get that much because they got it for free. Exactly. Uh, grab that if you can at that cheap price because it, that book is creeping towards a consistent $20 book. I don't think it's called a preview book, but I don't think people realize the entire issue number one for the resistance is in it. If the resistance continues to gain in popularity, if it gets optioned, things like that, that book can be nuclear. It was a giveaway. It was thrown in people's book bags uh, and forgotten. So it's one to keep an eye out for. I honestly thought it was a catalog when I was given it. Yeah, it's one of those things when you win the middle of the kind, they hand them to you like, yeah, okay, whatever. Just for to make you shut up. <laughs> when yeah, you get back I, and look at it, you're like, oh, wow, this is kind of cool. Yeah, I, I'm I an asshole. Look, I didn't look at it till I got back to South Carolina. I I, I kick myself now. I could have grabbed a hundred of them because those upshot people were so aggressive with their marketing, um, and they really didn't pay attention to whether or not you had just walked past them. <laughs> They're like in your face. <laughs> yeah, because their booth was by Valiant and by Mad Cave, which are two booths where we we did uh, a bit of networking, a bit of marketing. Um, 
I was walking by their booth constantly and then the ladies who were out there marketing for them were constantly trying to give me a $20 book that I kept telling them, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Like an and the funny thing is, is those booths are on one side of the convention hall. You had people clear on the other side in the aisles also handing mm -hmm. out the one shot. So kudos to them. I mean, that's some sneaker, sneaker man. What do you call that? Feet, boots on the ground marketing. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. Every time one of those women walked up to you, they were trying to hand you a $20 bill. How many of you out there were like me and were like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Not now. I want a hot dog. <laughs> yeah. It's like, man, listen, it's Baltimore. Let's be honest. We were like, not now. I'm a little hungover. <laughs> <laughs> but there it is, guys. Those are the 10 picks for us this week. Let us know in the comments. What did you like? Are there other things that you're looking at for Final Order Cutoff? If you want to see that full list, make sure you go over to simplemanscomics.com. We have that full list available for you. Not just comic books, but like we said, it's talking about trade paperbacks, omnibuses. We're talking about toys, statues, board games. Board games is a big thing right now, especially with yep. people being in their homes. Um, so don't overlook those as well. But either way, we also have the additional printings that are coming out this week, don't we, Jack? That's right. And that's another thing, Brian, you mentioned board games, people being at home. Contact your LCS. They can put an order in. Diamond's got in-stock board games. They, they can put an order in for a board game. Uh, if there's a game you're looking for, it doesn't have to be a brand new release. can be out, uh, whether it's a popular game like Settlers of Catan or the games like that. You can get that from your LCS. They would be more than happy right now to throw you a nice discount to put that order in for you. Um, again, support those LCSs right now. They need it. But as you mentioned, we have some additional printings and some good ones. Um, we're going to start off with that ridiculous one that we just not even going to cover it further, but that Empire second print. Um, furthermore, Marvel, we've got more. We've got Cable number one hitting a second print. We've got Star Wars Bounty Hunters number one, mega popular, hitting a second print. Uh, Star Wars Darth Vader number two hitting second print. Star Wars uh, Kylo Ren number four hitting second print. X-Men number eight hitting a second print. We've got uh, Crow, uh, that new series, the number one hitting a third print. And then finally, one that I want to highlight, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 100. We've got the deluxe hardcover special edition. Um, it's not quite a trade because it's only one issue, but what you're going to get is you're going to get a deluxe hardcover edition. You're going to get kind of some more context. You're going to get a, a cover gallery with all of the store exclusive variants. And there were some really amazing ones. Um, and you're going to get some kind of creator context talking to you about the story. And the greatest thing is the MSRP on this is $15.99. The cover price for the book was already like $8. So if you pre-order this book right now, you can probably split the difference, pick it up for about 12 to 15. Um, in my opinion, that's a one to be on the lookout for as a Ninja Turtle fan. Got to have that on the shelf. So there it is. Those are our 10 picks plus the additional printings. Once again, that full list is up on simplemanscomics.com. We have a brand new episode of Simple Man's Comics and Friends coming out next week. We have some great guests this week. We're going to have fellow YouTubers and Comic Core members. We have Drew Manchu as well as JB from Discovery Bay Comics. You guys aren't aware of them. They both are Comic Core people, but they also have their own YouTube channels. So make sure you check, check out Drew Manchu and Discovery Bay Comics, and they will be the guests on our podcast this coming week. With that being said, this is Brian and Jack from Simple Man's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.